So after five days, nothing could separate South Africa and India. The match and the series ends in a draw. And joining me now, former South Africa captain, Sean Pollock. Sean, a draw. Draw match, drawn series, fair enough? Yeah, I think a fair result in the end. Um, even down to this test match, I thought uh, both teams fought hard. It ebbed and flowed as to who was in control. Uh, so it's probably worked out uh, in the right way that they get to share the spoils. There was a couple of Indians uh, hoping that maybe Sewag would get going and uh, they'd go for the victory, but that was never really on the cards, was it? It was all about survival, wasn't it, for, for India today? Yeah, I think he was the key. Um, if he got off to a fast start and uh, he went on to get a, a decent hundred, um, then they would have got close. But otherwise, it was always just going to be about survival. I thought the pitch was going to be a new ball wicket. Um, you know, they, South Africa needed to make early inroads and they didn't manage to do so. Um, and then it was just about batting time and in many ways the Indian team looked very comfortable there today. Uh, there was a few little moments that got everyone a bit excited but in general they had it under control. As for the uh, South African bowling, what did you make of that? Yeah, as I say, I think the wickets got pretty good in the end. Um, Paul Harris was going to have to contribute and get some wickets but there wasn't really much rough for him to work, particularly to the right-handers. Uh, he troubled Gambier and, and had a few half chances which unfortunately for him weren't taken. But uh, yeah, in general, the new ball didn't strike and uh, the rest of them tried hard, but uh, it was always going to be an uphill battle. There'd be a bit of criticism, wouldn't there, be for Paul Harris, the fact that he didn't get a wicket. Uh, would that be fair? Well, there will be, but I don't think it would be a fair criticism to give him because uh, he had well drivered out LBW, which uh, wasn't given. Um, and he had a, a drop catch off Gambia, which, you know, if you get two wickets, all of a sudden... Um, the confidence pulls and the momentum is with you and he could have had more of an impact so it would be a bit harsh um, but in saying that I suppose when one spinner gets seven wickets uh, and the other one doesn't get any there's always going to be a bit of uh, criticism floating around. I know Ali Backer for one uh, is kind of hoping that uh, Jan Borto will get his chance at test level are you are you kind of in that party as well? Well I mean he's done well in the one days there's no doubt and he got an opportunity on a few occasions in the test match arena uh, and now we've got Imran Tahir as well who's also available who's a leg spinner who's quite exciting so um, yeah I mean it's good that we've got competition for places in the spin department um, you know we've never really relied too much on the spinners winning us games and, and hopefully that can change. As far as this match is concerned, um, one or two people are saying that perhaps South Africa could have declared a little bit earlier, given a bit of a chance of uh, going for a victory a little sooner. Uh, what do you think to that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a valid point because, you know, obviously they've run out of time to bowl India out. But uh, when this responsibility lies with you as a captain and the buck stops with you, it's difficult. Uh, you know, if, if India had got going and it set them 250 and they'd managed to win the game, um, all of a sudden you'd say, well... What sort of decision was that? You had plenty of time. Uh, so you can understand them uh, being a little bit cautious. Uh, the only thing I would have thought is maybe they could have had five or six overs at them last night where India wouldn't have come out and tried to attack and they might have been able to put them under some pressure and pick up an early wicket. But besides that, uh, there's not much I would have done differently. So for India, a drawn series, which uh, the first time they've done that here. So is that a, an achievement for them? Yeah, definitely a feather in their cap. I would say a moral victory. Um, you know, for me, I think India have been superb. The way they've bounced back, they've showed the character. Uh, they're rated number one and they've showed the reason why they are such. Um, you know, they were um, really hammered in, at Supersport Park in that first test match. Uh, and to bounce back, I thought that was them. I thought they were gone for the rest of the series. They bounced back in Durban, they won that comfortably and they held their own here. So, yeah, that is a big feather in their cap for them. Last test for uh, coach Corey Fansell. Uh, are we now expecting perhaps some changes, do you think, ahead of the next test series, which I understand is going to be Australia at the end of the year? Yeah, I think it's all got to do with, uh, you know, Graham Smith has said he's not going to captain the one-day team after the World Cup. Uh, I'm not too sure what his uh, thoughts are about the test team, but there'll be a new coach at, at the head of proceedings and uh, whoever it is, obviously he's going to have a path which he wants the team to follow and you know, whether there's, there's people that are personnel that changes, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, it's an opportunity for them to reflect, uh, take their test cap off for a while and think about where they're going as a team and, and what they want to achieve going forward um, and then hopefully plan and, and execute after that. But for now it'll just be focusing on the World Cup, uh, making sure they perform well. Fun Corey Van Zell's taking them there and then once that's finished they can sort the other issues out. It's also potentially the last test match for uh, Gary Kirsten as India coach. Uh, uh, the number one in the world, it's going to be quite difficult, isn't it, for them to, to potentially progress any further. But from what you've seen, you know, is there any, any more room for improvement, do you think? Well, I think it's got a nice series coming up. I mean, they go to England, um, which would be a big test for them as well. I think England have played superbly in the Ashes. So, 
Yeah, it's it's a real opportunity for them. I think every time they go away from home, I think that's probably been the Achilles heel that they haven't been able to perform as well at away as they have it done in their own home grounds. So, yeah, I mean, they'll take a big boost from this and take a lot of confidence. Um, and also, I suppose, from their side, you know, their coach will change. Uh, maybe some personnel are coming to the end of their careers. So, yeah, it's, it'll be very interesting to follow it and see how it all pans out. As far as uh, the next few months are concerned, we're now into the T20s and the uh, one dayers. Uh, from what you've seen so far, I mean, are you getting uh, quite excited? Are you getting qu quite looking forward to the, uh, the the upcoming series? Yeah, it's it's a hard period. This, you know, teams they want to make sure they're on top of their game by the time they arrive at the World Cup, and there's be injury worries. I mean, Sewag's going home, Kallis is injured. So there's different things that they're going to have to do to prepare themselves and they want to make sure that their game plans are in place. So it's a big period, it's a big month um, leading into that World Cup and, and the teams will know that they have to get things right. So it's exciting times. Um, but yeah, looking forward to the World Cup. I think the preliminary stages of the World Cup, uh, you know, it just basically knocks out the minnows, if you want to put it that way, and then it gets down to serious business. So I think it should be a fantastic World Cup when it arrives. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Sean. So there we have it. Uh, it's all square here. We're now off to Durban for the T20. From Cape Town, Dan Williams, ESPN.